Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? What's making you hit yourself? This gun in my hand. Seven twenty one AM on a bench in Gristle Park, Falk Ziljan, implacable hero by virtue of the fact that he carries a gun, sits waiting for a messenger. A woman approaches looking concerned, wearing a stylish but modest dress and a long coat. Miss Fatal? Fertal. Mrs. Fern Fertal, but you can call me Fern. I understand you have a message from my business manager, Gary Mackinder? Yes. Mr. Mackinder wanted you to know that he's secured space for one of your stories in an upcoming issue of Speed Detective magazine. Sounds great. Is he writing up one of my past cases or hiring someone to write it? We have to begin right away. My girl Ethel, they've taken her. They want ransom. Who's taken her? What are their demands? Bad men. Here comes one of them now. <coughs> what? <coughs> hey! <coughs> you won't stop us from getting our ransom. <coughs> Wait, cool off. Give me a chance to get the money together first. All right, but don't keep me waiting. Sorry if I jumped the gun there. I'm just... He's dead. Across the street. I saw the shooter in that third floor window. Stay here. I'll find them. I'm coming with you. It's too dangerous, Mrs. Fertal. We don't know who might be waiting in this building. Please, call me Fern. I insist. What does Ethel look like? She's my adopted daughter. A beautiful little thing from the Near East who got herself in trouble. Fell in with the wrong crowd? Gambling debts? No, she met a boy and he got her into trouble. Oh, how far along is her trouble? Never mind. The shot must have come from this apartment. Stand back. No one's here. They cleared out. Look, on the nightstand, there's a cigar and a matchbook. Maybe it'll have the name of a nightclub or uh, uh, Blue Blazes Matches. That's no help. Here, on the rim of the ashtray, it says Rupert's Suds and Buds. Sounds like Limey Town. That's just down the block. Hurry. Why would the guy rush away from a shooting just to stop for a drink? He must not have suffered during Prohibition as much as some of us did. Bartender, can I get a red pop and rye on the rocks? What are you having, Falk? My treat. Uh, root beer, thanks. What's that? It sounds like a fight. She's my daughter. My sister. My daughter. My sister. Stop beating yourself up, Evelyn. Everybody forgets to send birthday cards to relatives now and then. Forgetting two in the same year isn't that bad. There was only one relative. Well, good. You got even less to feel guilty about. I could have sworn this was Limey Town, but maybe it's not. Yeah, we you having a spot of bother? You having a go at me, bruv? I'm sorry, sir. I only know English. Cheeky. Fern, would you recognize the shooter if you saw him again? I didn't get a good look at him, and they don't spend a lot on light bulbs in this joint. Yeah, it is dark in here. Everything's it's, it's hazy. My root beer. They slipped something in my root... This gun in my hand is brought to you by Chumley Hamster Farm. Raise hamsters, the new wonder animals from Syria, often called toy bears. Delightful pets, everyone wants them. Laboratories need thousands. Clean, odorless, raise anywhere. A profitable and interesting hobby or business. We furnish breeders and instructions. Write today for a free book. Chumley Hamster Farm, 1813 Telegraph Road, Paragon City 7. We now return to the third minute of Speed Detective. Episode 78 of This Gun in My Hand, already in progress. Come on, Mac. Wake up. We got no time for this. You think we should off him? First, we gotta find out if he told anybody else. Boss is buying real estate cheap because he knows he's gonna be worth a fortune after the aqueduct goes through. If people find out about it, they'll bid up the land. You're not in Chinatown, fella. This is Limey Town. I never heard of such a place. Wait, Chinatown? I don't think we're working for the same team. My boss is part of the big tree, trying to sink trolleys and city buses so everybody has to buy their own car. You work for the big oat tree? No, the three biggest car makers. And the judge been buying cheap real estate in the bad part of town. When they put the expressway through, that land is going to be worth a fortune. I think you're looking for Toontown. Falk, don't let this gunsel get you off track. We need to find Ethel. What's a gunsel? It's Yiddish. It means little goose. Oh, that's nice. It's not meant to be nice. I'd love to find Ethel, but we're kind of tied up at the moment, Fern, to these chairs. That's all right. First, we need to communicate with each other in a way these two mugs won't understand, even when it's right in front of them. 
Think of a song with lyrics that convey your message, and then hum it. I don't think that's how secret codes is supposed to work. You're forgetting the secret part. Better yet, forget humming. You know how to whistle, don't you? Uh, yeah, but no time for love, Mr. Ziljan. Hey, he's loose! Where'd she get that knife? You didn't do a very good pat-down when you pulled us into this back room. Take that! <laughs> Yow! Look out! <laughs> Shooter! We don't need both of them! <laughs> when I worked for Barnum and Bailey, they called me the Annie Oakley of knife throwing. The name never caught on, but it was true. Take this! <laughs> you missed! You'd be dead if I was wearing my glasses. At least I was able to cut the ropes you tied us up with. Let's go, Falk. These two clowns have nothing to do with Ethel. How do you know? Because I saw the real shooter ducking out the back door of the pub just before you passed out. Hey, we really don't know anything about your cheap real estate schemes. We're looking for a girl named Ethel. Have you seen her? No. Nah. Okay, thanks. After him, he's getting away. We can still catch up to him. I was a cross-country runner. Great. All these rushed set pieces and the one that has to be stretched out is a foot chase. He's getting on that bus. Do you have a nickel? Here. He's getting off the back door of the bus. I don't see him. Which way? There, on the sidewalk. Shells from sunflower seeds. What's that mean? Ethel loves sunflower seeds. He probably has her. He was alone when he boarded the bus. You think she was on the bus and he dragged her out? I don't know. Come on. We still have seven scenes to get through. Are you kidding? Let me just shoot this guy. We have to visit Alderman Grappelli at his mansion, find out how he's involved, then you have to get knocked out with a blackjack and wake up in a hospital where they're being paid to keep you restrained. You break out and escape at night while a thunderstorm rages. What are you talking about? Then you have to hit the bookstore, find out who killed the chauffeur, where they put the camera negatives. We don't really need to know who killed the chauffeur, but then it's back to Grappelli's mansion. What does this have to do with finding the kid? I don't know. I just wanted to have one of those convoluted plots like the really good detective stories have. Mom, do you ever feel you're, you know, not a strong female character? No. Not, never a moment of doubt? No. Do you have any advice for how I can achieve that confidence? No. Okay. Everything going fine for you? You're in good health? Yeah. Good. I had two misfires at the range this morning. That seemed like a lot. How many rounds did you fire? 300. Is two misfires out of 300 bad? I might have a word with the guy at the gun shop. I hand-loaded those rounds myself, so I assumed there was some problem with the gunpowder. Might have gotten damp. So I should keep my powder dry? Is that some kind of parable for how I can become a strong female character? No. When have I ever spoken in parables? Sorry. Let's come about. We should get the sailboat stowed before your father gets home. I need to pick up some sour cream for the beef stroganoff. That sounds good. So no products or services to recommend today? Or just words to the wise? No aphorisms? Man with hole in pocket. What is with you, Denise? Can't we just have a half hour sailing without you grilling me about feminine hygiene and self-defense and womanhood? I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. You'll see how taxing it can be when you have a teenager of your own someday. No, I won't. How do you think you'll avoid it? Send them to boarding school? I'm not having kids. Are you kidding? Not this again. Mom, I don't need kids. I don't need a man. Once I finish the apprenticeship, I won't need to rely on anybody. Yes, your road to independence begins with the apprenticeship program from the International Brotherhood of Electrical Villains. You'll learn valuable skills such as disabling burglar alarms, fabricating detonators, sabotaging power grids, and deciphering your grandfather's notes on how to reanimate the dead. Apply at the hall of your local International Brotherhood of Electrical Villains today. Falk, it's just around this corner. We've been running all morning. Even with two commercial breaks, I've hardly had time to catch my breath. Do you want your story in Speed Detective magazine or not? There he is, and he's got Ethel. Stop! Chumley, let her go! You knew his name all this time and didn't tell me? We could have tracked him down without chasing phantoms all over the greater metropolitan area. So, you roped Falk Ziljan into this mess? What did she tell you her name was? Fern Fertal? Shut up! She told me her name was Shauna Dobrigesee. You know, whatever her name is, I bought Ethel fair and square. Stop him, Falk. Get her back. Get who back? I don't see anyone on the street besides this guy in the little cage he's holding with the mouse in it. 
Ethel's not a mouse. She's a Syrian golden hamster. Hamster? What is that, a boiled pork dish? Or a policeman who belongs to a gang? Cops don't form their own gangs. This is Parabellum City, Mr. Ziljan, not Los Angeles. No, a hamster is a rodent related to mice, but so much more. You know, the new wonder animals from Syria, often called toy bears. Delightful pets. Everyone wants them. Laboratories need thousands. Clean, odorless, raise anywhere. Yeah, yeah, I heard the commercial. That was you? Chumley Hamster Farm. I got a boy hamster at home, and Ethel here's already pregnant, so I'll have a litter within days or weeks. Fern, you said Ethel was your daughter. I love her like a daughter. Isn't that enough? I told you she's a beautiful little thing from the Near East who got herself in trouble. Where's the lie in that? And you sold her to this guy? I needed the money, but I can't let her go. Please, Falk. I gotta think about how to handle this. Later, on his usual bench at Gristle Park, Falk sits with his confidant and fellow crime fighter, the wordsmith. You really got mixed up with dangerous dames this time, Falk. From what I can tell, there was no ransom plot. Chumley had purchased the gangster mouse fair and square. The first guy who attacked me must have been hired by Fern. I don't know who shot him. Maybe another accomplice of Fern's. Then the two guys at the pub were thugs working on totally unrelated schemes. We just converged at the wrong place at the wrong time. So who ended up with custody of Ethel? The woman or the breeder? Neither of them. I put Ethel on a plane back to Syria. Fern is going to jail, whatever her name is. I can't stop Chumley's breeding farm, but at least I could save one beautiful little thing from the Near East who got herself in trouble. Excuse me, is your name Falk Ziljan? Yes, that's me. Gary Mackinder wanted me to convey the message that he has secured a space for one of your stories to be printed in a magazine. This time it will be in Lingering Detective. Oh no, not again. Monthly. Tell him I won't do it. Tell him... what? Magazine. Speed Detective, episode 78 of This Gun in My Hand, the final episode of season 6, was hastened by Rob Northrup. This episode and all others are available on YouTube with automatically generated closed captions of dialogue. Visit thisgunninmyhand.blogspot.com for credits, show notes, information on how to subscribe, and to buy my books, such as, you're gonna love this one, Little Heist in the Big Woods and Other Revisionist Atrocities. What magazine am I most often associated with? The one that fits into the grip of this gun in my hand! <laughs>